All right, let's do law of cosines. Now, like you said, it does look a little scary at first, because if you're looking at the book and you see that equation, you're like, oh my word, what in the world? But it's not that bad. Um, let's see, what do we have? 20 till, right? So I've got 25 minutes. I should be able to do this in 25 minutes, easy. Oops, I forgot to do this. I always forget that. There we go. All right, um, don't write this down right here. I'll tell you when to start writing. Up to this point, in this chapter anyway, for the trig stuff, what kind of triangles have we always dealt with? Right, right triangles. Okay, we always had a right triangle. So if they gave us, um, if they gave us two sides, we'll just make this super easy. If they gave you two sides, that one, that one, um, you should be able to find all the missing stuff now. Would you agree? You should be able to find this angle, you should be able to find this angle, and you should be able to find this side. Okay, the side's the easiest one. What would the side be? Four, right, three, four, five. I just made it easy for you to see, all right? Now, how would I find this angle right here? We'll call it angle A. How would I find angle A? This is review, this is not new, all right? I just wanna, I just wanna show you a little bit of how it relates. So how would you find A? What would you do? Use trig function, right? Which which one? Okay, tangent, opposite over adjacent, or you could use sine, opposite over hypotenuse, or you could use cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. So when you know all three sides, you can use any of the three trig functions that you want, okay? So you like tangent? You said that first, so let's do tangent. All right, so the tangent, I don't even know why I'm going through this because actually, yeah, let's just do this. Uh, the, so the tangent of A is equal to what? Opposite over adjacent, 3 over 4. Then what do you do to get A by itself? Now this is something that we are going to do today. So this is good that we review how to find that angle. Do you remember how to find angle A? Angle A is equal to, get rid of the tangent. How do we get rid of the tangent? We don't, we don't divide by the tangent. Angela, what would you say? We take the inverse of the tangent. That's correct. So I take the inverse. How do we show inverse? Tangent to the negative first. Everybody with me? And then you just do what after that? Oops, it's a weird looking. Three over four. What do you do now? Put it in where? Calculator. Okay. Uh, just for fun, since we've gone this far, might as well finish it up, right? So, um, does everybody know how to use your calculator on this? Like on this calculator I'm using right now, see this little TI30XA, right? If you have something similar to this, what I do is I hit three over four first in the calculator. So I hit three divided by four, then I hit equals, which is 0.75, right? Then I hit uh, second function tangent. So I do the fraction first, then I do the tangent, or the inverse tangent. If you had a calculator like that graphing calculator I put on the screen sometimes, then you would go inverse tangent first, Right? It gives you the first parentheses, then you put three over four, close the parentheses, hit enter, and you'll get the same exact answer. Okay? So please make sure that you know how to use it. So it's 36.9, approximately 36.9 degrees. All right? So that's old stuff. But what if you did not have a, um, have a right triangle? What if you had a triangle that was not... A right angle. Well, you got to have something else. And again, I'm not going to show you the history of this. I don't even know the history of it. Um, I could probably derive it for you, show it where it comes from, or show you where it comes from, but I'm just going to give it to you. All right. And it's a thing called the law of cosines. Law of cosines. And it's one equation. And one part of the equation, probably half of the equation, is an equation you already know. It's a formula that you already know. Okay, this is called the law of cosines. So it starts off just like the Pythagorean theorem, but then they throw some other stuff in there to account for this not being a right angle. Okay, so it starts off with the Pythagorean theorem, but we start with the C first. Instead of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we start with the C. So give me half of the law of cosines right now. Okay, what did I just say? It's not a squared plus b squared, it's the other way. It starts with the C. What is it? C squared equals what? A squared plus B squared. Yes? It's not it, but it's half of it. So right now, you've already got half of the law of cosines memorized. Would you agree? Yeah, because you already know the Pythagorean theorem. 
there's a little bit more. And how did they get to this? Well, you could always look somewhere, watch a YouTube video, law, just type in law cosines on YouTube and they'll show you how to do it. And most likely there's gonna be somebody on there that shows you how they actually got the law of cosines. Again, you guys are in ninth grade, you probably don't care one little bit about where it com comes from. I'm just gonna show it to you. Everybody ready? I've built this up so much, you're probably at a fever pitch right now, aren't you? So excited to see what the law of cosines is. So it's minus two a b, we're not done. It is the law of what? So cosine, so what do you think is gonna be in there? A cosine, so here's where the cosine shows up and this is capital C. Because you always take the cosine, the sine, the tangent of an angle, so that has to be a capital. This is a lower case, so that's a what of the triangle? It's a side of the triangle, okay? These two are sides, these two are sides. What's the only angle? Just angle C. So you have to know one of the angles, and you have to know one of the other two sides. Actually, you could know this side, but as far as straightforward using the law of cosines, if you know two sides and the included angle, okay, what is two sides and the included angle? That side what? Angle, side. So if you have a situation where you have a triangle and you have two sides and the angle in between, if you have that, it's probably a good possibility that you're gonna use a law of cosines, right? Not 100%, but it's probably a good chance that you're gonna use it. Here's another way you could write it. For instance, let's draw, let's draw, um, it kind of looks like a right angle. It seems like every time I try to draw an acute triangle, it always looks like a right triangle. I don't know why, but it always does. But pretend that's not a right angle, all right? And um, what if I called this angle ABC? What am I gonna call the sides that are opposite those angles? What am I gonna call this side? Instead of calling it BC, what's a little easier way to call that angle, to name that angle? Yeah, little a, good. And what's this side over here? Little b, and this one, little c. Everybody got it? So that's how we usually, when we, when we write the law of cosines, that's how we're referring to it, okay? What if you had angles x, y, z? It, you could still use this, right? Even though you're at ABC, you're just naming them different names, that's all, okay? It's not that big of a deal. All right, so here's the deal. This angle has to be opposite that side right there. Everybody got that? All right, so this is the angle that I'm gonna deal with, and that's the side I'm trying to find. So that means I should know what? Two of my sides, right, A and B. You with me on that? Now, there is a situation where they don't tell you the angle, and you're gonna to have to find the angle, and we're gonna do that. But for right now, the easiest way to do law of cosines is if they uh, give you an angle, they give you the two sides that are next to the angle, and you gotta find the side that's opposite the angle. Everybody got that? All right, now, you could have done this. What if we didn't wanna use angle C? What if I wanted to use, let's say, um, angle A? So I wouldn't go C squared. What, what do you think I would do? I would go A squared equals, what are the other two sides? Yeah, B squared plus what? C squared minus, what do you think this is? See how this is AB and this is AB? So it's gonna be two what? BC. And then instead of the cosine of C, what would we write? The cosine of the angle that's opposite this, the one that's by itself out here, okay? So that's another way that you could write it. Do you have to memorize them both? No, I only memorized this one, all right? But you could use it this way. Let's do one more. What else could you get by itself? We got C by itself. Well, kind of by itself. It's squared, but, you know, get the B squared, right? So how would I write it if I put B squared? What would these be? Yep, it'd be A squared plus C squared minus two what? AC times the cosine of angle B. So there's three different ways that you could look at it, all right? But they all boil down to basically the same way. Most of the time, almost every, almost, it's every book I ever have taught out of, they always do, do it like this. C squared equals A squared plus B squared, probably because it looks very similar to the Pythagorean theorem, okay? and then minus 2AB cosine of C. So it's really the only thing you have to memorize, this minus 2AB cosine of C. That's not too hard to memorize, is it? You think? No, it's not. All right, so now we know it. So technically, if, if you were to, if somebody asked you what's the law of cosines, this is probably what you would write, okay? This would be okay, this would be okay, it's fine. 
um, but that's usually how we would write it. All right, let's do a, um, let's just use this triangle. Let's scooch it down a little bit. Let's get rid of the, uh, let's just get rid of all this. Just because in my notes, I labeled it a little different. I just want to stay consistent with my notes. So that's A, that's C, that's B. This is 57 degrees. And this is side A. You know that's side A because it's opposite angle A. And they tell you that that's six, and they tell you this is nine. So here's a non-right triangle, okay? It's a non-right triangle. And for the first time, we'll, we're gonna be able to solve uh, a missing side on a non-right triangle, okay? And we'll also be able to find some missing angles, but we're gonna do the side right now. The side works perfectly, uh, I'll tell you what. Let's just write it like that. Uh, since this is an A and an A, if you wanted to, you could write it like this, what would it be? It would be A squared equals what? B squared plus C squared minus two BC cosine, oops, I got the C cosine of what? Angle A, because it's always the angle that's opposite this side. Everybody good? All right, now let's plug some numbers in. The hardest part about doing the law of cosines is just using your calculator. That's the hardest part, all right? And I'll show you how to do it. So um, do I know A? No, so I just keep it A squared. Do I know B? Yeah, it's six. So it's six what? Squared plus C, what's C? Nine squared minus two, and then you just take those two numbers, six and nine, and multiply them together, and then you take the what? The cosine of angle A, what is it? It's 57 degrees. So look, you can just chuck all this into your calculator, but then what are you gonna have to do though? Because that's equal to A squared, and take the square root of it. So you could start off with the square root right off the bat, or you could do this. I'll tell you what, mm, yeah, we got time. We got like 12 minutes. Um, I'll give you one minute to put that in a calculator. So get your calculator out, put it in without me telling you anything else. I want to see if you come out with the right answer. We've had this discussion many times, haven't we? Well, got to get one. I don't know what else I can tell you. It just doesn't fly. I mean, it just doesn't fly. I tell you all the time, you got to get a calculator. Where's your calculator? Okay, what'd you get? 58.17? That's not what I got. Did you take square root? That's probably what it was. Well, on this, I mean, just plug it into the formula. That's your work. But then from here to the answer, there's really no work. You just put it in the calculator. So what'd you get? Yeah, approximately, right, 7.6. Very good. All right, that's how you do it. Everybody good with the calculator? All right. The key is this. Did you do this? Did you put that in parentheses? Yeah, that's the key right there. Okay, so if I was going to use, not a graphing calculator, but if I was just going to use like one of these little calculators, I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> because some of the little calculators do it the way the graphing calculator does it, and some of the little calculators do it like this. The, they call it direct algebraic logic, D-A-L, when you put it in exactly the way you should in the calculator. So here's what I would do. On this little tiny calculator, I would go six squared, then plus nine squared minus parentheses, two times six times nine. And then I'd put times 57 and then hit cosine and then close the parentheses. Then hit equals. Do you hear me on that? All right, so I'd put this squared plus this squared minus parentheses, two times six times nine, and then times 57 then cosine, right? And then I believe you would hit equals, and it'll probably give you the cosine of 57. I don't know, it might give it to you right away. 
Anyway, most of you guys got it. You told me. So work on it, okay? It's up to you. I'm not going to give you a whole calculator lesson today. Now, what if you wanted to find one of those angles? Let's do a different triangle. Just because I would do it right now, but we're running out of time. And I'm just going to do the example that they give you in the book. So that was example one. I don't think I wrote that down. But that's, this one is example two. So you got another triangle. Now there are some situations, depending on the information they give you, that you cannot use uh, the law. Uh, yeah, okay. So we're going to find everything on this one, okay? We're going to find all three sides and all three angles. But they give you two sides. So they give you this as 6, they give you this as 5, this is 78 degrees, all right? And they go A, B, C. This is A, this is B, and this is C. All right, so let's write all our stuff down. So if this is angle C, what's this? Side C. This is angle B. This is side B, angle A, side A. Everybody good? So which version of that formula are we going to write down? Because we, we're trying to find this right now, right? So the C one, right? So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Remember it already? Minus what? 2AB and then cosine of C. So that doesn't take long to memorize it. And you will have to memorize it. I'm not going to give it to you on a quiz or a test. You have to have it memorized. Not that hard. What I would suggest, every time you do one of these problems, I would write it down every single time. Okay, the more you write it down, the more you're going to remember it. All right, so let's do this. So C squared equals A squared. What's the A? 5 squared plus B squared, which is 6 squared, minus 2 times 5 times 6 times the cosine of angle C. That's 78 degrees. Again, we're starting to run out of time now, so I am going to um, just write it down. You can always... 7.0. Now why why is it even necessary to put point zero? Because we know that it rounds to a point zero. All right. So it's not a 7.1, it's not a 7.2. It so that means the number after the zero was less than a five. Everybody understand that? So it's 7.0 something less than five. All right. That's how we can round it to one decimal place. And that's pretty important. It's called significant digits. You'll learn that the more science you take. All right, so that's what you get there. So give that a shot. Now, here's the, here's the thing that's a little different. We're going to have to squeeze this in pretty quick. I want to solve for angle A. Can I just take it away from 180 or anything like that? No, the problem is I got two unknown angles, right? So once I find this one, then I can find B by just take, you know, adding these up, taking it away from 180. But here's what we're going to do. Um, and we know what C is now, right? It's approximately what? 7.0 because we just found it. So what we're going to do is do the uh, law of cosines with this angle right here. So we're going to go what? A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of what? A. All right? And that's what we're solving for. We are going to solve for angle A. So we're going to have to do a little algebra. It's not just a matter of putting it into a calculator. So somebody asked me about showing work. Um, yeah, this is definitely a spot where you can show your work on this. All right, let's put the numbers in first, though. Do I know little a? Yeah, 5 squared, right? Or I put 5 and then I square it. Do I know the b? Yeah, I know all my sides, don't I? So that's 6 squared plus c. I just found it, right? Even though it's an approximation, I'm just going to put 7 squared minus 2. And then these two? 6 times 7, cosine of, hmm, what? Don't know. So what am I going to call it? Call it A. That's what we're solving for. All right, so now, here, let me show you how to do the algebra, and then you can put it in your calculator. Okay? I think this is a, a good way to do it. I want to get A by itself. So what do I have to get rid of first? Get rid of, no, not the cosine just yet. Yeah, and then what's first? Like if I had something like this, if I had 2 equals 5 minus x, what would I get rid of? Let's do this, minus 3x. What would I get rid of first? The 5. I would get rid of the 5. How do I get rid of the 5? Minus 5. Same idea. What do I get rid of first? What's being added or subtracted? 
this stuff's being multiplied, correct? That three was being multiplied. I didn't get rid of the three first, okay? It's not, it's not a six, what is it? It's a six what? Six squared, and what else can I get rid of? The seven squared, that's right. How do I get rid of a six squared and a seven squared if they're being added? You subtract, that's right. So what am I gonna have? I'm gonna go five squared. What do I do to get rid of this? Minus six squared, what? Minus seven squared. Do I have to show it over here? Now, I know it's gonna add up to zero. I know it's gonna cancel out, so I just get rid of it. Everybody with me so far? That's all I did, just subtract these two from both sides. Now I got all this stuff that's being multiplied. How do I get rid of something that's being multiplied? I divide. So I'm gonna divide every, I'm not gonna show it just because I think we're at a point now where you know it's just gonna cancel out, right? So I'm gonna divide this side by not just a two, but a what? A negative two, a six, and a seven. So I'm gonna do that to the other side as well. So what do I get over here? Negative two, what? Times six, times seven. Yeah? Let's move that over. <laughs> just like to center it up. All right? And what happened to all this? We just divided, so what happened? They canceled out. So what am I left with? The cosine of A. So let's do this. Let's, well, not yet. I want to set it up so A is by itself. All right? So if the cosine of A equals all this, how do I get A by itself? What do I do? Not don't, don't divide. Take the inverse, that's right. Take the inverse of the cosine. So what does taking the inverse of the cosine here do to that cosine? It cancels it out, right? So what do I have to do to this side now? Take the inverse of the cosine again. Everybody see it? So all I do is take the inverse of the cosine of all that. So that's my algebra. And I think the, the algebra was kind of streamlined, wasn't it? I didn't have to show every little step like you did when you're in Algebra 1. Right? I think at this point, you're sophisticated enough to know that when I subtract these from this side, it just goes away. right? So I subtracted it from this side. Again, I think you already know that if I divide this stuff, this side, by all these three numbers, they'll just go away. Yes? All right. And then cosine of A, how do I get rid of that cosine? I take the inverse of it. And you know that that will cancel that out. But I have to take the inverse of the other side as well. You got to practice it. This is something you need to practice. It's not that hard. I really don't think it's hard. It's three steps. Subtract a couple things, divide three things, take the inverse, right? Subtract, divide, take the inverse. Now, you just put this in your calculator. So once I do that, I would go five squared minus six squared minus seven squared. I'd hit equals, I get a big old number, right? Divided by, and then I would put this in parentheses. Maybe your calculator doesn't require you to do it, but I would just be safe. I'd put divided by parentheses. I go negative two times six times seven, close the parentheses, then hit equals. That'll give me that whole big thing once I hit equals. Then what's the very last step that I would do? I would take the second function, cosine, and then I should get an answer, and you should get about 44.6 degrees. Write it down and try it yourself. We just don't have time in here to really do that too much, to really uh, go over that. So using your calculator, and that's equal to what? Angle A. So 44.6 degrees. Let's go back up here. Angle B should, this is 44.6. So angle B should be very easy now. How do I find angle B without doing any hard work? Do what? Set them equal? Is that? I, I can barely hear you. Yeah, 180 minus these two. Okay, so add these two up, set them equal, or subtract them from 180, and you'll get approximately where we're going to do that. Do that right here. Angle B. If you do that, so it's 180 minus 78 minus 44.6, and you'll get 57.4. It's actually a squiggle, they're approximate, and I should put approximate right here. And there's your answers, that's how you do it. That's how you do law cosines. So it looks, at first it looked like it was kind of crazy, but really it's not that bad if you practice, okay? Make sure, the number one thing you need to practice is how to use your calculator. I cannot stress that enough. Everybody hearing me? All right, it looks like you're packing up, not listening to me. I cannot stress enough how important it is to practice 
practice, practice using your calculator, making sure you're getting the right thing. Do this problem three or four times if you need to, all right, using your calculator. Your, ge your algebra right here, okay, is really important, all right, but then using your calculator is super important. So it's not just as easy as throwing somebody a calculator and say, hey, give me the answer. It takes a little bit of knowledge of your calculator and all that kind of stuff. All right, leave that uh, area homework up here. You know what your homework is? I gave you a lesson plan, one to seven, isn't it? Or six, one to six? Okay. So one to six. Well, you didn't, it didn't come out the way you wanted it then. Yeah, because you can't take the cosine of that. Which one, which one was that? All right, let me, let me erase or stop recording.